what you doing? Are you in your recliner? <laughs> well, this video is mainly chit chat. So a podcast style of experience, if you wish. If you're busy with your own cleanup prep, there is no need to be glued or fixated to the screen. Or if you're the kind like me that likes to watch things getting cleaned up and all shiny and looking good again, then thank you for watching. <laughs> Alternatively, thank you for listening. I am going to be cleaning my lecker as opposed to my oven. How about that? And, uh, well, Christmas stories, a little bit of reminiscing. And I wanted to, <laughs> this time of year, oops, this time of year, I do remember certain things in my past. I try not to reflect on the other things, but I remember, I will never forget living and growing up in Kenya was a child's dream. It's the middle of summer there now. Beautiful temperatures, high humidity. Ah, just, just a dream. It's beach weather every day, every night, even all night. But when it came to Christmas traditions, seeing as I have a German nationality, there were certain traditions that were attempted to be adopted in Kenya during the height of summer. And one of those was the classic example I like to reminisce on was our Christmas tree. And for many years we just decorated one of those in-house palm trees that you could have, you know, the usual tinsel and all that stuff that was still permitted back in the day. My mom had that imported from Germany because we couldn't get that in Kenya. So, and uh, yeah, we had lights of sorts. But uh, in Germany, for example, we always had a real tree, usually one of those blue Nordic spruces, and then real Christmas lights, real candles in the tree that was attached to one of those little brass clips of sorts and then be vigilant about how you place those candles because there is a there is a certain danger when you've got a tree lit with these candles but and then you have to replace them and all that good stuff which is which is fun I remember doing that with my grandparents but back to Kenya so we had a palm tree and then one day timing was such that my dad came home for the time of Christmas and actually brought a blue spruce from Germany on his ship and we had a real blue spruce again for the first time. <laughs> it lasted not even a week and all the needles fell and it just looked so sad. Now meanwhile, back in the day, I don't do this anymore, but our Christmas trees always went up on New Year's Eve, not before. Decorating was part of the New Year's Eve tradition for the adults and presents were then distributed to the children at 5 p.m. and it was midnight mass after that. Well, in Kenya, we got our first blue spruce and it lasted a week and it looked something had just taken a razor, electric razor, and just shaved everything down. So that one didn't happen again. There was not going to be another real tree in our house. Next year, the following year, <laughs> the, the fake trees came in and my dad brought a fake tree in a box. Wow, that was novel. It was one of those green ones where the, you know, the, this, I don't know what to call them, the, the twigs, it's not twigs, but you know, the, the pine sprays at the end, forgive me, my lack of terminology, but, and they were, they were plastic, but they were like a um, thicker plastic. It wasn't as fine and realistic to the touch. The whole tree was a plastic tree that you stacked 
in sections. Cool. And we enjoyed that. We put in some real lights. <laughs> it worked. Proper candles, it worked. We were very vigilant that night and uh, nothing, nothing melted. It was awesome. So we had a fake tree and that's how we were going to do it. And then uh, the next evening, <laughs> we, had, <laughs> we had a melted tree standing in the corner, leaning like towards the window, lar large glass windows, and had stuck itself to the window pane and dripped on the floor. <laughs> the pine needles looked like something out of a horror movie, like that, you know, the horror fonts that you get just dripping. Completely bent out of shape. And it was, oh my goodness. I mean, I didn't know what to make of it at the time, all these fancy things, but it was, it was a goner, let's just say, because the South, facing window in Kenya in the middle of December <laughs> the heat the heat took the tree down and made it look like something akin to a question mark oh my goodness when I think back about it now well that tree came down pretty quick we normally wait until like the 6th of January in my family to take trees down but yeah, that didn't even make it to New Year's. So we had a fake tree for 48 hours. Needless to say, no more, no more trees at that point. We went back to palm trees. <laughs> so that is my little story of reminiscing regarding Christmas and adopting some form of tradition from Germany to Africa um, with minimal success. So that was my little story. I hope that you enjoyed that. What I'm going to do now is go into the kitchen, which I have no space to set up a tripod and show what I do next. But basically all I do now with my leg, I've taken up and peeled off as many of the roots that I can. What I do is um, flush it, like really, really get the debris out of the sink. And if I have to, on some instances, I see moss. Where can I find one with moss? But anyway, if there were to be like a little layer of moss on top here, I take the toothbrush and actually scrub. Oh, here we are. There we go, a little bit of moss, and I scrub that moss off. As I rinse this and flush it out under the, in the sink, under the tap, and then they go one by one, individually and hopefully all clean, into a saucepan with RO water. And I boil them for 10 minutes. I, I bring them to a boil and boil for at least 10 minutes so that the heat can penetrate right into every bit of leka, big or small. Let it cool down. And then you will see nice shiny leka going into my stash bucket. I'll be right back. So as I was cleaning my lecker in the sink, I wanted to qualify a thought that occurred to me. Why am I using RO water? And uh, I'm not saying that's the way to do it, but my water quality is off the charts, awful. So that is why I, as I try to keep my lecker clean and do the best that I can, I use RO water for boiling. And for me, that has worked super well. And then I have a pH when all this is said and done of eight. Now the RO water is coming out at 10, believe it or not. That is because of the quality of my mains water, which is well water and it actually comes out at a ppm of 350 sometimes 380 on a good day i have it at 200 and in the summer when i have it at 200 i actually then 
flush some pots of the less sensitive orchids with a 200 ppm of tap water thoroughly and the last flush is just RO water. So in case you are wondering why is she using RO water, what a luxury and yes it is. But that is why if I boil this leka in my tap water, I'm already adding minerals and stuff to it that I'm trying to leach out. So just to qualify that thought, once it has boiled or is boiling, some of the debris, I stir it, <laughs> and some of the debris, as you can see, comes floating to the top. And then I go in with my strainer while I stir in order to agitate what's going on in there and then pick out anything that rises to the top. So, Boxing Day, this is what's happening on my stove. <laughs> I'll see you just now. Sunshine! We have moved location. Let's enjoy some of the winter sun. Winter is coming soon, literally soon. Right, just to show you, even though the leka has been flushed through with just plain water and getting it cleaned and everything, you can see after boiling how much residue and substance is around the rim there. And despite it looking clean, that's why I boil it to hopefully get more and more of the little fine powdery debris off. Now, something that I've noticed I want to bring to your attention is also the fact that some roots even with the toothbrush, don't come off completely. Eventually, I will see the water quality of my Lekka bucket and uh, check on the top surface if there is kind of something that looks a little bit off, after which I take the Lekka out in batches, remove the water, the old water, and then fill up again with fresh water, having flushed these out one more time. So that's how I store my leka. Let's have a look-see. There we go. King is also having a look-see. So my leka is always submerged. It is in full RO water. I do not treat my leka with calcium or magnesium or anything like that because I am so wary of the high mineral content in my plain RO water anyway that I'm not going to, on top of that, add more minerals into the lecker by adding calcium and magnesium. I do not understand the science of calcium and magnesium or the magnesium drawing out the excess minerals. I also, and, and I don't understand it because I don't know, every time I remove lecker, there's another concentration in the bucket. So I'm very, very cautious about adding any minerals to something that already has quite a high ppm as as it is so imagine if i'm repotting something and i'm taking out you know a lot of lecker what have i got left then as a concentration of my ppm with the magnesium so in order to err on the side of caution in my case i just have plain ro water and always leave the lecker wet covered up like that and uh thank you king yeah you're awesome good grief yeah so that's uh my how I do my lekker, a little bit of a Christmas story. <laughs> and I hope that you found this a little bit oddly satisfying. And <laughs> thank you, King. Anyway, I appreciate you spending your time with me on a day like this. I hope that you enjoyed this. <laughs> I just can't. And I'll see you all next time. Have a wonderful day, evening. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.